Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to another Singer Reise video podcast, where we talk about the life of a working opera singer. My name is Jonathan Sylvia, and I'm your host. Thanks for joining us. With Christmas just around the corner, I thought this would be a good time to bring out one of my favorite Christmas carols. So for this episode, I'll be talking about the Wexford Carol. The Wexford Carol is an old, old carol originally from Ireland. There are claims that it is among the oldest of carols in the European tradition, but naturally a claim like that has many challengers. That we know this carol at all is due to a trend back in the mid to late 1800s and early 1900s. Back then, technology and communications were advancing quicker and quicker, and people started feeling like they were losing their identity. Thankfully, this is not an issue that we have today. To rediscover where they came from, musicologists, that is, people who study music, started going out into the countryside to collect folk songs, like carols. What resulted were compilations of song in book form. Often these songs would have the inscription as sung by this random person or clergyman, or as heard in such and such county. The songs would then be cleaned up a little bit, written out, and then put into an anthology and published for widespread use. The most important of these works was the Oxford Book of Carols, originally published in 1928. This unique book captured exactly the right balance between scholarly work and singable tunes. Much of that was due to its very talented editors, the clergyman Percy Diermer, Martin Shaw, and the very famous composer Rafe von Williams himself. The Wexford Carol was included in this book. It was collected and transcribed by William Gratham Flood, an organist and music director in Enniscorthy. Enniscorthy is in the Wexford County of Ireland, thus the title, The Wexford Carol. He sent it to the editors of the Oxford Book of Carols, and from there it was catapulted into becoming a big hit. By the time it was collected, it had already acquired a mostly standard English text. It was translated from Irish quite a long time before that, possibly even as early as the 12th century. In the US, the Wexford Carol is not as well known. Our caroling culture is just not quite as strong as it was in the British Isles during the Victorian era. Lucky for us, we have a wide variety of pop singers and celebrities to make Christmas albums for us. This is truly the American way. But through them, the Wexford Carol is starting to make its way into the mainstream. Singers such as Alison Krauss and Celtic Women have performed renditions of this song in their albums in recent years. Choral arrangements are also starting to show up, such as Mac Wilberg and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. They included the Wexford Carol in an album just two years ago. The arrangement that I am using is by Philip Mao, of whom I know essentially nothing. It comes from a collection that Sarah happened to have one year as I was rummaging around looking for something to sing. Whether it is by pop singers or choirs or singerheiser, exposure for the Wexford Carol, in my mind, is a good thing. It really is one of my favorites, and I've been able to perform it several times over the last decade or so. The text is pretty standard fare as far as carol texts go. It recounts parts of the story of Christmas. The first verse actually starts with an invocation, calling us to consider what Christmas means to us today. The second verse recalls the travel of Mary and Joseph, who in this version is just simply called her guide. Apparently, the Irish didn't think that Joseph was important enough to have a name. Anyway, they find, of course, that there is no room for them to stay. The third verse, at least in this version, talks about the arrival of the shepherds at the manger. What's interesting about this text is not necessarily the narrative, since that's all stuff that we have heard before. Instead, it's that the text uses this storytelling mode, where it's always like one person is trying to address a crowd of people in front of him. Several times, the speaker is pointing backwards, connecting the story to what was foretold. At other times, he is reaching into the present, connecting the old story to our everyday, modern day life. What really gets me is the melody. It goes back and forth between two different scales. The first one, a major scale, and the second one, some version of its parallel minor scale, either a Mixolydian or a Dorian mode. 
And if you have no idea what I just said, send me a message and I'll make a video about it. In fact, if you know what I just said, send me a message. I like getting feedback. As it turns out, having these two keys makes it easier to play on the lute, lending credence to the claim that this song really is as old as people say. What results is a lovely, somewhat mysterious carol that draws the ear to the magnitude of the story being told. If you want to find out more about the life of a working opera singer, check out our website, singacheise.com. There you'll find articles and resources all about singing and about Schubert's masterpiece, Winterheise. You can also follow us at facebook.com slash singacheise. And I'm most active on Facebook, so this one will see the most updates. While you're there, make sure to like and follow the page and to like and share and comment on any of the posts there. Because of the way that Facebook works, Facebook needs activity on the Singer Heise Facebook page in order to put it into other people's timelines and feeds. Even if you like the page, sometimes you won't see all of the Singer Heise content unless a lot of people are going there. So I highly encourage you to stop by pretty frequently and check out what's happening. Of course, there is also twitter.com slash Singerheise. You can follow the at Singerheise user handle there. And of course, you are presently watching the Singerheise YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to that before you go and even to set your notifications so that you get notified every time a new Singerheise video is released. Finally, there is patreon.com slash Singerheise. This is the funding mechanism by which I can continue doing these Singerheise videos. You can become a patron of Singerheise for just one or a few dollars every month. And your patronage means a lot. Uh, without your patronage, I'm not going to be able to continue doing these Singerheise videos in 2018. So I still need a few more patrons. I, I could actually use a lot more patrons. So I highly encourage you, if you have enjoyed this video, to go and be a patron and support this so that more of these videos can be made. I hope you enjoy the Wexford Carol as much as I have these last many years. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas. to earth to end.